Get ready to steam up your screens because the world of AI just got even harder with the arrival of the newest Pygmalion 7B model. Hello humans, my name is Kayo Erwolo, and geez, what a week we've had. It seems like every single day we have a new LLM model coming out to dethrone the previous king. And it looks like today is no exception because the team behind Pygmalion AI just released not one but two new models fine-tuned on the 7 billion parameter Llama model, Pygmalion 7B and Metharm 7B. So what are exactly the differences between those two new models? Well, first of all, if you watched my previous video on Pygmalion, you will know that the previous Pygmalion 6 billion parameter model is a fine-tuned version of the GPTJ model, fine-tuned on a bunch of not safe for work dialogues and stories to make it specialized in conversation and not safe for work roleplay. Well, this new Pygmalion 7 billion parameter model is basically the exact same thing, but this time, instead of using the GPTJ model, it is using the leaked Facebook Llama 7 billion parameter model, which basically just means that this is exactly like the previous Pygmalion model, but just way more powerful. And I gotta tell you, after a few hours of testing, I definitely saw the differences between the two models. And when it comes to the second model, called MethArm, this one is a more experimental model that is more specialized for conversation, role-playing, and more specifically, text adventure games. Now, unfortunately, I gotta tell you, for this model, I'm not exactly convinced. I did try it out a little bit, and to be honest, it's not really my cup of tea because I'm not exactly a big fan of text adventure games and also the generations are often hit or miss. But don't worry if this is something that interests you, I will still show you how to use it later in the video. And of course, for those of you asking this question, of course these models are completely uncensored. I mean, I gotta say that it's even better than uncensored because often when you're talking to a character, they will very often push you toward a not safe for work dialogue. So if this is something that you like, I think that you will enjoy this model very much. Now the question that you might ask yourself is, okay, so that's great and all, but is there really a big difference between the 7 billion parameter model, fine-tuned on Llama, and the previous 6 billion parameter model? Now, in this video, I will try my best to show you the differences between the two models, but obviously, compared to previous comparison videos, since these models are more specialized for conversation, it's gonna be a little bit more difficult to objectively compare the quality of the generation. So for this video, I will be using the Tavern AI interface, that is basically an interface that is specialized for conversation and and role-playing with different characters, and that is especially made to work with models like Pygmalion. And to connect to the interface, we're going to be using the Ubabuga Tech Generation Web UI. Now, you don't need to use this Web UI if you don't want to. Instead, you can use something like Cobalt AI, and then use that to connect to the Tavern AI interface. But since I already have the Ubabuga Tech Generation Web UI installed, I will be using this instead. So again, make sure that you have this installed in your computer. If you haven't, I made a video on this like a week ago, so watch this video first. Then for Tavern AI, you're going to click the link in the description down below, you're gonna arrive on this page, then you're gonna click here on the windows.exe link, which will download error archive that you're gonna extract, so right click extract, then inside the folder, you're gonna double click on the tavern ai.exe file, then you're gonna launch the web UI, and now inside the UI, you're gonna download the Pygmalion 7 billion parameter model, for this, you're gonna click the link in the description down below, you're gonna arrive on this page, then you're gonna click on this little icon right here, to copy this entire name, then go to model, under download custom model or LoRa, you're gonna press ctrl V to paste the entire name, and then click on download. Now again, I'm not gonna do it because I've already done it before. Then you're gonna click here to refresh this entire list, select the newest Pygmalion 7B model, make sure that for the parameters, you input 4 for the W bits, 120A for the group size, and Llama for the model type. Then you're gonna save the settings for this model, and then you're gonna reload the model. And now that this is done, we're gonna connect the Ubabogatic Generation Web UI to the Tavern AI interface. And for this, you're gonna click on Interface Mode, then under Available Extensions, you're gonna check API, then click Apply and Restart the Interface, and next, you're gonna see a brand new API URL, then you're gonna select it, Control C to copy it, and now if you go inside Tavern AI, then in Settings, make sure that under API you've selected Cobalt AI, and under API URL, you're gonna paste the URL that you just copied, and then you're gonna click on Connect. And there you go. And now we're running the Uvavoga Tech Generation Web UI inside the Tavern AI interface. And now it is time to select a character that you want to talk to, so you can either choose a bunch of characters that are already present on the page, or use the search bar to find a character that you want. For example, if I search for Nami from One Piece, as you can see, I can select this character right here, and immediately start a conversation. And if you want to find other characters, you can either join my 
Discord server and go into the character sharing section and download a bunch of characters made by the community, or go to the Pygmalion AI Discord and do the same thing, or you can use a website like Buru.plus and download a bunch of characters. And for example, if you want to download a character and say that you want to download this one, you're gonna click on it, then you're gonna right click, click on the load original, and this will download a simple PNG file. Because yes, that's all you really need. Because inside the PNG, you have a bunch of metadata that will be read inside Tavern AI. And for this, you're gonna simply click on characters, click on import, then select the PNG file that you downloaded, and well, there you go. Because now if we select this character, we now have this entire character's personality, description, and greetings ready to use. Simple as that. And yes, obviously, if you are using the Pygmalion AI model, I highly recommend using this in combination with the Tavern AI interface. Because this is by far the best interface and the best roleplay experience that you will have. And if you're asking how much memory all of this uses, as of right now, the Uva Boga Tech Generation Web UI running in combination with Tavern AI, for me, it is using around 60 gigabytes of VRAM. But again, do not forget that I'm recording a video right now with also a bunch of applications running in the background. So for you, it will be definitely way lower. Okay, so now let me try showing you the differences between the new Pygmalion 7 billion parameter model and the previous Pygmalion model. Now again, as I said, it will be very difficult to show you the differences in a simple conversation. I mean, this is not an objective comparison video that I usually do using translation questions or math questions or coding questions. So the result that you will see here, the quality of the results will be very, very subjective. But you know, let's chill, let's have some fun and let's see if we can notice differences between between those two models. And obviously, of course, since this is YouTube, I'm not gonna be able to do some, uh, you know, not safe for work roleplay for you. So this will be a very simple, very nice roleplay. This way YouTube will be very happy. And for this, I simply choose a random character called Arena. So that being said, let's start the roleplay. The line for alcohol at Coachella seems inordinately long. As you wait in line, the sun beats down on your head, sending sweat rolling down your forehead and your back. Sighing, you look longingly at the ice on display, dreaming of gulping down a nice cold beer. Hey! Says a voice, bright and cheery. You turn. By your side is a girl, mischievous hazel eyes peeking out from under her baseball cap. Do you mind doing me a favor? Can please you buy me a beer? Promise I'll pay you back. Looking at her suspiciously. Um, why? She stares back at you, her expression sincere and open. The words come easily to her lips. Because I'd really rather enjoy myself today than worry about getting home safely. And besides, I'm just 19 years old. I'm not even old enough to drink legally. Staring back at her. Well then, if you're not old enough to drink legally, then... And I can't buy you beer, duh. She looks so hurt, like a kicked puppy. I promise you I am, I swear! Her expression goes from disappointment to desperation. Please, just one beer? My expression goes from calm to bored. Uh, no, I don't even know you. Why should I buy you anything? Her expression turns to pleading, her lips trembling slightly. Please, please, I've been trying all morning and now I'm so hot and thirsty. Getting annoyed. Well, give me one good reason why I should buy a beer to a random person I've never met before. She looks you straight in the eye, her expression earnest. Because I need a friend and I want to party with someone fun. I thought you were that kind of guy, someone who would help a stranger out. Looking straight back. Can't you have fun without booze? She looks at you like you're an idiot. Of course I could, but I want to have fun with a friend and I need to buy this beer to keep my word. I promised my friend I would buy her a beer and I intend to keep that promise. Looking suspiciously at her. Wait, I thought you were looking for a friend to party with and now you're telling me you already have a friend waiting for you to buy beer for her. Are you taking me for a fool? The look on her face changes to one of panic. No, of course not. I'm not playing any games with you. I just need to buy this beer and I will pay you back with interest. Trust me, I'm not a con artist. Getting bored and annoyed. Look, none of what you say makes sense. Plus, I don't know you and I have no money to buy you or your friend beers. So if you don't have anything else to say, you can leave me alone. I look surprised, almost offended. Are you saying that I can't ask for help when I'm in trouble? That's rude! Getting even more annoyed. Wanting someone to buy beer for them for free is not what I would call being in trouble. That's just called being a freeloader. She looks at you with wide eyes, a little dumbfounded. But I'm not a freeloader. I'm just asking for help buying something I need. Bored expression. For free. Yeah, that's what a freeloader does. She takes a step closer to you, looking into your eyes. Then, why are you so angry? I'm just a nice girl who needs some company tonight. You seem like a nice guy, too. Couldn't I just ask you for help instead of having to beg strangers? Don't you want to help me out? Angry. But we are strangers. Okay, I'm done talking to you. Goodbye. Leaves the conversation. She watches you go. Well, that didn't work out well. 
I guess I'll have to find another way to get my beer. Now, as you saw from that conversation, that character called Rina tried everything that she could to manipulate me into buying her beer. And that is because if you look at her character sheet, she is described as a charming but also manipulative character. And indeed, she came with her friend called Elise, for which she tried to have me buy them beers. So as you saw, the conversation was pretty smooth, it was pretty good. But now let's actually change the model to the previous Pygmalion model and let's try to have the exact same conversation conversation to see what kind of differences there are between the two models. So now if I click here and start a new chat, now we are using the previous model. And I'm actually gonna use the exact same dialogue than before to see if there is any changes. So again, same thing here. Do you mind doing me a favor? Can please you buy me a beer? Promise I'll pay you back. Looking at her suspiciously. Um... Why? The girl giggles, fanning herself again. The scent of sunscreen fills the air around her, and you realize that she must have been sweating pretty hard all day. She looks at you expectantly. I promise not to tell anyone, just please. Looking at her suspiciously. How old are you? Nineteen, and how about you? She smiles innocently. You notice that despite being so short, she still manages to make her breasts seem large enough to fill two hands, even when standing upright, staring back at her. Well then, if you're 19, you're not old enough to drink legally then. I can't buy you beer, duh. The girl giggles and slaps your shoulder playfully. That's what I thought! She leans closer, whispering into your ear. But I know where there's a secret stash. My expression goes from calm to bored. Secret stash? Secret stash of what? The girl puts her finger to her lips, making a shushing motion. Shh. You'll see soon enough. Follow me. With that, she turns and begins walking toward the entrance to the main stage area. A huge crowd surrounds you and you struggle to keep up with the girl. People bump into you, spilling drinks and food onto the floor. Some kids laugh loudly while others cry. Getting annoyed. Okay, wait, stop. Give me one good reason why I should buy a beer to a random person I've never met before. The girl stops in front of a door labeled staff only. She gives you another pleading look. Come on, just this once. With that, she opens the door and motions for you to enter. Getting annoyed. Okay, fine. Open the door. Inside is a small office filled with liquor bottles. At the back of the room is a stairwell leading down into the basement. The stairs creak ominously beneath your feet. On the walls hang posters advertising different bands. In the corner, someone has set up a keg. Two bartenders stand behind a counter near the door, looking suspiciously at her. So, what is that? A sly grin crosses her face. She takes a step forward and speaks in hushed tones. Just follow me and you'll see. Looking suspiciously at her. Okay... At the bottom of the staircase, you come upon a dimly lit corridor lined with doors. After opening a few doors, she leads you to a locked door marked Private. Inside, there is a small metal cabinet containing an assortment of alcohol. Rena opens the cabinet and pulls out a bottle of whiskey. This will work. She says, handing it to you. Angry. No, I'm good. I don't even like alcohol. Look surprised and confused. What? Are you kidding me? You don't like alcohol? That's crazy! Everyone loves alcohol, especially me. Bored. Well, good for you. I don't care about that. Her face drops. Her eyes go wide and round. Wait, really? But, but everyone likes booze. She stammers, looking around nervously. Everyone drinks it, even adults. Do you think they'd rather drink water? Bored. Well, I don't care. Looking hurt, she steps away from you and grabs the bottle of alcohol off the table. Fine. She mumbles, turning away from you and slamming the cabinet shut. I guess I can't count on you to help after all. Angry. Okay, I'm done talking to you. Goodbye. Leaves the conversation. Sits down on the floor, kicking her legs restlessly. Suddenly, a shadow falls across her face. Looking up, she sees a man in black standing over her, holding a gun. He points the barrel directly at her chest and orders, Give me your wallet. Okay, so as you saw, there are some differences. Because in the end, for some reason, it has started a new scenario type. With like some guy holding a gun, trying to rob her. And also with the previous model. At least in this example, there is plenty of sentences that should be written as a dialogue, but ends up being written as an action cues. Now obviously, as I said, this is very difficult to compare role-playing stories between the two models, so this is very, very subjective. Now for me personally, even though the first story was a little bit more, I would say, boring, it felt also a little bit more real, where the character talked almost like a real person, while still keeping her personality intact, whereas the second story, made with the older model, was definitely more, I would say, interesting, but also a little bit weird, because like in the beginning she was asking me to buy her beer, but then very quickly she led me to a secret stash of alcohol that she took for free, so I don't know why she talked to me in the first place to buy her beer, me a complete stranger, if she knew that there was a secret stash of alcohol somewhere 
that she could take for free. So that's kind of a weird story, definitely. I mean, don't get me wrong, it was very interesting. And this could definitely could have gone to another type of scenario, if you know what I mean. But I would definitely say that the conversation was a little bit more nonsensical. It almost felt like the model was hallucinating a little bit, at least in that example. Now, obviously, as I said, this is not an objective way to measure the differences between those two models. But at least now you have an example and you can decide if you want to try this new model out or not. Now, one thing that I could tell you from the examples that I've made of camera is that when you're going to the not safe for work path, I can definitely tell you that the new 7 billion parameter model is way, 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 way more precise. Especially if you go to settings and you increase the amount of token for the generation, you will often have a lot of details and a lot of action cues from the character. Now, yeah, personally, if I were to choose a model, I would definitely try the new Pygmalion 7 billion parameter model over the previous one. Now, if you want to know what the other Methar model does, as I said, it is a model will specialize for text adventure games. So if this is something that you want to try, you can download this model right here, that I will leave a link for it in the description down below. Then you're gonna download the methar.yaml file, which is the file that you will use for the instruction. And then you're gonna go inside your text generation with UI folder, into characters, instruction following, and then you're gonna paste that YAML file right here. And now if you select the Methar model, make sure the folder parameters, you choose 4 for W bits and model size llama, do not choose anything for group size, and then you can reload the model. Then for the mode, you're gonna click on instruct, and then for the instruction template, you're gonna select the method template that we just downloaded. And now if you click on generate, and now you can start a new text adventure game, where you're given a situation and a bunch of options to choose from. So for example in this case, welcome to the world of adventures, you're standing in front of a huge castle, looking at it from afar. It looks like you can get there without help, so what do you want to do? Choose one option. Option 1, go back to the village and ask for directions. Option 2, ask someone if they know how to enter the castle. Or option 3, try to find an entrance by yourself. So for example, if I input 2 and then click on generate. So yeah, for some reason it did not choose option number 2 and it chose option number 1 instead. So yeah, this is what I told you previously. This model could be very interesting, but it doesn't really work well for some reason inside the Uba Booga Tech Generation Web UI. And also, well, personally, text adventure games are not really my cup of tea. So personally, I don't think this is a model that I will be using. But I mean, obviously, if you want to try it out yourself, you can. But maybe wait until you have something a little bit more stable. So yeah, there you go. This was the new Pygmalion model. Again, as I said, it is very difficult to show you the differences between two conversational models. So again, this is like the best that I could do. But I mean, if you can, definitely try this out yourself. It is an uncensored model, specialized for conversation and not safe for work roleplay. And when combined with Tavern AI, this becomes an amazing roleplay machine where you can have hours and hours of fun. Yes, those kinds of fun. So yeah, I mean, what can I say? Definitely try this out yourself. I think you will love it. And there we have it, folks. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm. Thank you also so much to my Patreon supporters for supporting my videos. You guys are absolutely awesome. You people are the ones who support me so I can make these videos for you. So thank you so much. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.